to our Tuesday check-in time at Westminster United Church in Thunder Bay. If this is your first visit with us, uh, a special welcome to you, and uh, I hope you can join us again for another one of our uh, Facebook live broadcasts, um, which happen uh, every week. So, we're here on uh, Facebook Live on Tuesdays at 11. Uh, for a quick check-in and then Thursday evening at 7 we have evening prayer and Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We have a time of prayer and reflection and uh, that time will finish up uh, in plenty of time for you to get over to the Trinity Live website uh, for the shared United Church service uh, that uh, all the churches take part in in the city. Um, let's see, a reminder to board members that there will be a meeting this uh, Thursday, June 11th at 7.30 following the evening prayer. We have a prayer request from John and Janine for uh, their nephew Mark, who is having a really difficult time right now. Uh, June is Pride Month. You'll see my sign behind me there. And so, because uh, I don't have a lawn to put my sign on, you'll see it here. Uh, during our times together for the month of June to remind us all that we are an affirming ministry in the United Church of Canada. Uh, one final announcement, and that is that this Sunday for our prayer and reflection time beginning at 10, uh, we will be celebrating the Sacrament of Holy Communion. So you are invited to um, uh, get together your uh, elements, your bread and cup, whatever that might be. It could be juice and crackers. It could be tea and toast, uh, whatever uh, you and uh, your family would like to use to uh, share in that time of, um, of Holy Communion, you're welcome to have that ready before we start our worship at 10. So, I had a week of vacation. It was, um, it was lovely, and I'll tell you a bit more about that in a few minutes, but I want to start with a few thank yous. Uh, first, uh, thank you to Kim for uh, covering the Tuesday check-in and the Thursday evening prayers last week. Um, thank you so much, Kim. You did such a great job uh, with both broadcasts. Um, you know, I, I always know that when I go on vacation, I never have to worry about a thing with Westminster. Um, and I, I do so appreciate that. So thank you again, Kim. Uh, and a big thank you to our gardeners. Um, and to everyone who donated plants to put into the garden and for our folks taking care of the lawn and the property, everything is looking so beautiful over there. If you go to, the, to our, our Westminster Facebook page, you'll see some photos that I posted. Um, and make no mistake, this is a ministry we are providing for our neighborhood. We are being good neighbors in this time uh, by creating such a beautiful space for people to stop and enjoy. Uh, when they're out on their walks or uh, or their bikes or just out in the area. So thank you to uh, everyone doing that part of our ministry. And I want to also thank our pastoral care team, uh, all the people who are making phone calls, uh, sending emails and greeting cards. Um, again, what you're doing is an important ministry in our time. Uh, you're helping us all to stay connected with one another when we can't be together physically. So a uh, special thank you to all of our, all the folks that are helping us to stay in touch with one another. Thank you. So what I did on my vacation week, um, I read two novels. Um, one was a mystery and that was the first one I'd read since January, which tells me my reading life is getting back to something a bit more like it was pre-COVID. And the other was a delightful novel with a predictably happy ending, which is exactly what I needed on the weekend. Now, what else did I do? I relaxed on my patio and we even had a few days of good weather. Uh, so I planted my petunias and enjoyed the sun. It was delightful. And I'm sure as all of you have done as well, uh, I watched the news. Um, and I pondered my role in everything that was happening. Those protests in the wake of the murder of George Floyd have been ever present on my TV screen, but also ever present in my thoughts and in my reflecting and in my prayer. And I won't say too much about that, except that the whole experience is humbling and I'm learning and I'm listening. 
If you are a white person, the work of Black Lives Matter and the movement around it is your work. It's not the work of Black and Indigenous people of color to walk us through this. It's time for us to do the work of becoming anti-racist. It's not enough to not be racist. It's now time to be actively anti-racist. It is and will continue to be uncomfortable work. But we must not let that discomfort keep us from doing what is required of us. And that is to learn about our role in systemic racism and to take a hard look at the ways in which our lives are better because someone else's life is harder. I also want to say that I strongly object to the use of the term all lives matter. It is simply not a helpful term at all and it misses the point entirely. The problem right now and historically is not with all lives, it's with black lives. We are being asked in this time to focus on black lives as a matter of life and death. Lives are literally at stake. It matters. Saying all lives matter is like saying all trees matter when you're desperately trying to save the rainforest in Brazil, or when you're trying to stop clear cutting of trees in British Columbia. The problem is not that we need to focus on the trees out my window in my neighborhood. It's about focusing on the trees with the greatest need for protection. Another example, if you break your arm and go to the doctor, the doctor does not say, all your bones matter, not just your arm. No, the doctor gets to work setting your broken bones so it can heal. Now, I have more to say about this, but of course, that's probably enough for today. We will have time and we will revisit again and again and again this work that is before us. The other thing I did on vacation was to order a book. I'll let you enjoy the cat while I go get it so I can show it to you. That's right behind me, by the way. Okay, so this is the book I ordered. It's called White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. And I'm told it's very good. There are many uh, different leaders within the United Church who are doing book studies on that topic. Uh, so I haven't started reading it yet because, um, as I said, I was on my novels on the deck. But I will be starting that this week and I will uh, keep you posted on how that's going. And now the other thing. As you may have heard on the news yesterday, the Premier surprised us with an announcement about the reopening of churches. It came as a surprise to many people, including church leaders in our denomination, and uh, district and public health units were also caught off guard apparently, which means there's no comprehensive plan yet, but hopefully that will be coming soon. So here's how the announcement affects us at Westminster right now. We will not be in the building this coming Sunday. Under no circumstances will there be worship in our building this week. That much I can say for absolute certainty. That's, that's a done thing. We will worship online Sunday morning at 10 in the same way we have been doing since March. Your board will be meeting this week on Thursday evening to discuss the implications of being back in the sanctuary. As always, we will be sure to keep you informed of next steps moving forward. And I won't say anything more about that uh, prior to our board meeting, uh, just that we will not be in the building this week and we will be meeting to discuss uh, future plans uh, and we'll keep you up to date. So I think that's uh, about it for my update and check-in this morning. I hope all of you are well and 
uh, we'll be back here Thursday night, 7 p.m. for evening prayer. Until then, be safe, be well, be kind.